Hey, my name is Dr. Brendan McCarthy. I am the Chief Medical Officer of Protea Medical Center in Chandler, Arizona. Welcome to my podcast. Today, I wanted to talk to you about protein. Protein is not as safe as you think it is. <laughs> it's actually too much of a good thing is not a good thing anymore. Too little of a good thing is definitely not a good thing. The right amount of a good thing is the right amount of a good thing. The thing we navigate with in my field of medicine, in diet a lot of times, we have to navigate a lot of conflicting ideas on what's good when it comes to levels of protein in your diet. I want to start by saying the three main macronutrients are wonderful and beautiful and important. And if you eat them right, you're going to be great in life. Protein, fat, carbohydrates, they're all wonderful. Fat has the worst press. <laughs> it's had the worst press, I think since the 1960s. I think that's when it started becoming like, oh, yeah, fat's awful. Sometime in there, we just started blaming fat for weight gain in everybody. And, and, and low fat became the way to go. And fat became one of those things that really became almost like a pejorative term. It became a pejorative term to people. You know what I mean? We, it's not like you're saying, hey, you're really carbohydrate today. You look carbohydrate. You look protein. You know what I mean? No, you look fat. That's horrible. It's, it's a macronutrient. It's an essential macronutrient you need. It's been so potentiated. In, in, in the world and in, the, in the, um, the media and in our social spheres, the term fat has become so charged. So people avoid it subconsciously. The other one, carbohydrate. Carbohydrate's been getting a bad rap since sometime in the 80s with the, with the advent of Atkins becoming more popular. Carbohydrate slowly built up a very bad reputation as well. Fat still has the worst reputation. So fat, carb, you know who doesn't have a bad reputation? Protein. Guess what? I'm going to sling some mud at protein today. <laughs> there are people out there on the internet that'll tell you, you have to eat like 500 grams of protein a day just to be healthy. I mean, there's carnivores, there's meatitarians, there's proteinitarians, there's people who really push protein hard. Anything that's absolute like that, where the person's telling you to eat that much and they're not running lab work, they're not watching you, they're not staying by your side, they're not even running a urinalysis on you, they don't belong in the equation, okay? I just want you to know that anything extreme like that, you really deserve someone to stand by your side and make sure it's healthy. You deserve that. You make the decisions. You have someone by your side, just like a trainer. You know, lift some heavy weights. Hey, big guy, you're gonna do some heavy weights out there. You need to have a trainer or a spotter to do it right. So all these guys on the internet that really propose very high protein diets, to be consistent and not to be a hypocrite, but to be consistent, you'd want to have a trainer or a spotter on your diet then. If you're going to be doing heroic doses of protein, you want someone to keep an eye on it. So protein, I, I, I digress a little bit. I just have a, a problem with people giving really extreme advice on the internet. It's, it's hard because we want to manage it. So protein, you know, let me be really specific. Protein in my neck of the woods became very popular for weight loss. Uh, there's a protocol that was circulating around um, uh, about six years ago, uh, you know, 2018, 2019, where people would do uh, a lot of protein, high protein um, shake content. They would just do um, two protein shakes a day and one regular meal. And it was part of this protocol. There's a company in, in the Valley that had this whole protocol going and people would do that and they would lose weight. The problem is not everyone lost weight doing the protocol. Think about this. The whole idea of using a high protein diet for weight loss became popular, you know, again, like the 80s and 90s through Atkins. And, and I would say that people I see in clinic in your 20s and in your early 30s, it tends to work pretty good eating a lot of protein. And you'll notice that. People just like, I'll just eat a lot of protein. I'll cut down my carbs. I barely eat fat anyway. I lose weight. And you see it works. What happens to those women and men when they're doing that high protein diet in their 30s and 40s and 50s and it stopped working? Why didn't it work? I mean, they see this protocol that's being marched around town saying, hey, drink two protein shakes a day 
and, and eat a regular meal, you should lose weight. In the back of your head, like, that worked all the way throughout my 20s. It should work now. Why isn't it working now? So where this all originated, primarily, in my opinion, is uh, with in the you know late 19, excuse me, early 1900s, when children had seizures, epilepsy, it was discovered that if you were to give them a ketogenic diet, meaning very low carbohydrates, some in the neighborhood of uh, 50 grams or less, I believe it was back then, that those children would not have seizures because they'd be in ketosis. So that worked. And that was before the advent of medications that we've been using to control seizures. Fast forward to Atkins. Atkins and other doctors noticed that those people who were on those seizure type diets, those ketosis diets, lost weight. They weren't obese. They were lean. So they took that diet on the road. And Atkins was promoting that diet in the beginning. The diet would be that um, carbs would be less than 50 grams. You would eat enough protein specific to your muscle mass and your body weight and your activity rate. Say someone needs 2,000 calories to stay stable. We want to have weight loss in that person. We're going to give them a 10 to 20% deficit in the calories. So we'll pull that 10 to 20% off the fat. So that, in essence, is a basic ketosis diet. You give them this many carbs to keep them in ketosis, 50 grams or less, protein specific to their muscle mass, the rest being fat at a deficit that'll trigger weight loss. That's it. Over the decades, though, Atkins became altered. They started making um, bars and became more about um, functional foods they would have or you know meal replacement things. But but the other thing that happened in the in the the, the wider world is people just kept promoting more protein. People were not comfortable eating fat. Now, if you're someone in my field, you'll notice whenever you try putting someone on a ketosis diet, because there are times you may need it. It's not my favorite diet, but sometimes you need it. It's very hard to get that person to eat the amount of fat that they need. A lot of times they'll overcompensate with too much protein. They'll eat more protein because they feel better about it. They don't have that emotional attachment to the word protein. They do to the word fat. When they look at fat, they're like, I don't want to eat that because there's this thing we've been trained not to do. What is it that we're doing with that Atkins diet? Why was it working? Why was a keto diet working? It worked with seizures, the keto diet. Why is it working with weight loss? It goes back to insulin, which I've spoken about before, and I'm going to talk about it again, and it's so important you know this. That diet, the, the low-carb diet, the goal of it ultimately is not to eat low carbs. The goal of it is to lower insulin. Lowering the carbs will lower the insulin. See, insulin is the part of the equation. It's the thing your body secretes. It plays a role with uptake of sugar in the cells, absolutely. But if you have too much of it, you're not going to burn fat as an energy source. If your insulin is too high all the time, you're not going to be able to burn fat. So when you put someone on a ketosis diet, insulin levels drop down, they burn fat as an energy source. Awesome. The catch is that not only carbohydrates stimulate insulin, protein does too. Some proteins are worse than others. And this is where the problem comes in with that patient who's doing those shakes in the morning. And at night, they're having a nice meal and all the math works out, they should lose weight. The problem is, is that some of us are more insulin sensitive and have more of an insulin issue than others. And that's why that diet won't work very well. When you eat protein, the protein you consume, if it stimulates too much insulin, you won't lose weight. You just won't. I am an advocate for what works, so long as it's healthy. I'm an advocate for protocols that are specific to you. In cases like this, when a patient presents to my clinic and they're not losing weight and I see this protein, I have to sit down and I have to deconstruct their belief system on fat. What I do is also run their labs and educate them on the level of insulin in their body. I need to explain to them that certain proteins they can eat without a problem and other proteins they can't. And it has to do with the insulin index of foods. So those patients, I need to give them proteins that don't stimulate insulin. The lower the insulin stimulation of that protein, the more appropriate it is. Interesting fact, in those cases, things like scallops. Scallops stimulate a lot of insulin. They just do. So does shrimp, believe it or not. Chicken and breast as well. And those are considered great light proteins because they taste light, they feel light. This is a light protein. I can't gain weight on this. 
But when you eat them, they're going to stimulate a lot of insulin. And that insulin stimulation is going to trigger you not to lose weight. So if you're consuming one of those protein-rich protocols, you're not losing weight, chances are that your body's secreting too much insulin and we need to drop your protein a little bit or adjust the type of protein you're taking in. We need to modify your fat intake and then reapproach it from there. I hope that helps. Please like, share, and subscribe. If you've done a diet like this where you've done protein, you didn't lose any weight on it, did you change that around? Did that help you? Have you ever done that before? Have you ever had success with a very high protein diet for weight loss long-term in your 40s and 50s? These are important things. Please comment below. Please comment on the reels. Please comment on the YouTube, wherever you want to comment. Please do. People read your comments, not just me and Justin. Other people do as well. And that helps inspire people to understand other people's perspectives. What if you were to see in the comment section, someone writing down an event in their lives that was the same as you? Again, I hope this helps. I'll see you at the next episode.